a test talk will be given by uh, a videographer named uh, East Brown UC Takachi. His talk is Towers and Type 1 Curves. So, well, thank you all for being for waiting. Yeah, this is the last one. I can watch you put I hope uh, I'll be fast. So, first of all, I'll give you a brief introduction. Talk a little bit about code theory, the main code theory problem, curves. And then I'll talk about type 1 curves, mostly examples, tell you some applications of it. Then we'll also look at towers, see what we mean by the tower being as vertically good. We'll look at some examples. And finally, we'll see how we can put towers into type 1 curves. So, with respect to a code, we say that we have an N MD code. Of course, it means that the code has length M, then the size is M, and the minimum distance is D. And those are called the parameters of the code. So here is an example. If I take, say, this code C, it has size 3, the three words in it, and then, of course, each word has length 5, and the minimum distance is 2, because if you look at that word and this one, they only define two places. And of course, you might wonder why coding theory. The thing is that, think of like the, like the secret service. You know, you want to send a message. Usually you have the, 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 the source encoding. So somebody has a message. You encode that message. You send it through a channel. The channel encodes it. You know, sends it through. Of course, when it gets out of the channel, the channel decodes it. And then it gets the receiver who also decodes it. So of course, there is that channel error. So again, probably you might not be familiar with coding theory, what's it all about, but it has a lot to do with transmission of information between one place, from one place to the other. Okay, so here are some uh, notations that we use. Of course, a linear code is just going to be a subspace of that conflict of field. Then, interesting things which you want to pay attention here, they are the uh, relative minimum distance, which is just the ratio of the minimum distance minus 1 divided by Word length. Then also the transmission rate. Of course, it deals with you know how fast you can transmit your information and, and stuff like that. Then um, this notation, A sub Q N D. Of course, it's going to be the maximum you know the, the size of your of your code. So and it's not it's not easy to get that maximum size. So that's that's very very important and. One of our goals will be to have, see how to figure that out. Okay, here is an example. If you look at this code, of course, there are just two words in it. Probably when you compute some of the parameters, you might think, well, it's really good to look at, you know, the relative minimum distance is one and the transmission rate close to zero. And then a couple of things you want to know that as far as this code is concerned, it's really great in terms of its error correcting capabilities. And then at the same time, it's at the expense of the transmission rate. So it's like really, really slow to transmit. So you might think, oh, you have a good code here which you can use, you know, to correct, to detect errors and correct them. But at the same time, it goes with that deficiency. Okay. Here is another one. If you look at this one, this is a family of the Hamid codes. So probably there is a typo there, but they just family of Hamid codes. Um, the thing here when you compute the parameters of this code, you notice that the relative minimum distance tends to zero. Why the transmission rate tends to one? Of course, as your arrow goes to infinity, what does that tell us? There's all that for this particular code. Of course, it has good, you know, as it goes, good information rate. So the rate at which your information is being transmitted is great. But at the same time, the disadvantage, the downside, very poor error correcting capability. So that's the disadvantage of this code. So the thing is, in general, what do you want? As far as coding theory is concerned. You want to be able to encode your messages fast. You want to also be easily transmit them, transmit them fast, you know, detect errors and correct them. Those are things which you want to do. Okay, but then <laughs> here is the problem. So again, the question you really ask yourself, as far as the main coding theory problem is concerned, is that maybe given a fixed Q and M, you know, how good, you know, can you really construct code so that all those parameters, you know, they're carefully chosen. So it's not always easy. Okay. But then here, this is where, of course, um, AG code, people who are head of algebraic coding theory, it comes in, it kind of helps a little bit. So first of all, we'll talk about an algebraic curve. So an algebraic curve, of course, is just a variety of dimension one. Then the genus of a curve, 
It's just topologically, you can think of it like um, the number of handles of it. So if I have like a like a tire tube, then it has just one handle. So that would be one. The genus would be one. So think of the genus topologically to be like the number of handles which you you can you can your object has. Okay. But of course, these are important parameters when you are studying AG code. Okay. So here is if I here is uh, the the, the blockers from life says that if you have say a polynomial f of x like I have f x y like we have here of degree uh, t, then the genus of the corresponding non-singular projective uh, plane curve is given by one half the degree minus one times degree minus two. Okay, I'll give you an example. If I look at the clamp particle curve, of course, there the degree of this uh, clamp particle is four. So the genus, if you were to plug it into the formula we saw previously, so if you were to go back to that formula to get uh, to get the genus of the clamp particle, you have that to be three. So again, I'm just giving you an example of how you how you compute the genus of you know a given curve. But again, it's important, you might wonder why we'll see later on how, how important that is. Okay, remember I told you that with the event coding theory problem, it's kind of hard to choose those parameters so that you really get good codes. In terms of how fast you transmit it, how efficient you are with respect to detecting and correcting errors. So here, it turns out that you can get codes from Earth which are not, which are better. And this is where algebraic uh, coding theory comes in. So first, we're going to look at, say, you have an algebraic curve, and then you pick points on the curve. If you consider this, uh, the vector space consisting of functions on your curve, then you can define this evaluation map. So that's the evaluation map from your vector space to, to, the, to the F, Q, and A. And the way it operates is that, of course, when it takes each, each function f from your vector space, it just evaluates them at the various points of your curve. <coughs> and what happens is that the image of this, uh, of this map actually gives you, uh, sorry, it actually gives you the code C. So you can actually use the image of that evaluation map to define uh, this code C. So codes can be constructed from that, from that map. Okay, so some of the things which we want to talk about, they are the if you have a rational, if you have a rational function, you want to talk about its pole. Of course, its pole is just uh, points where the denominator vanishes, but the numerator does not. Then also we talk about the divisor of a function, and the divisor of a function is just that formal sum, which of course is over the integer n p. You do the sum across P. P comes from the set of your points, which of course, um, those points they could have poles or zeros. Again, the pole they wear the denominator vanishes, but the numerator does not. Okay, and the alpha, the the NP that we see here, of course, it depends. It's going to be a positive alpha if your if your P is a is a zero of order alpha, and it's going to be minus alpha if it's a pole of order alpha. Now, we've talked about curves. Remember, we started with coding, we started with uh, codes, we looked at the main coding theory problem, we talked about curves. Now, we're going to look at specifically type 1 curves. So, we've looked at a couple of things already. We looked at codes, looked at curves, now we're looking at type 1 curves. And again, the goal of all this is uh, does this help us in terms of the main coding theory problem? So again, that's kind of like a goal. So a diagonal curve is going to be a curve that satisfies this equation we have there where x is say to some power a and y is to some power b. And of course, we want a and b to be relatively prime. That means the GCD should be one. Okay. So here is an example. If I look at that's a diagonal curve. Again, the way these variables they are, we kind of we assign weights to them. We assign weights to the variables. So, for example, the y six there simply tells you that the variable y has weight six. So, at the end of the day, that first monomial which you have there, the total weight is twelve, and it kind of balances with that one, the y four. So that other variable there has weight four, 
and then the total rate for the, the monomial you have there is 12. So the 6 and the 12, they kind of they balance, they, they balance each other. And if you look at the 2 and the 3, they again relatively prime. Remember, if you go back to the definition for the, the previous definition, you want the A and B to be relatively prime. So in the next example, you see that the Y12 to the power 2, that one has weight 24, just like the 8, 3, 24 also. And again, the 2, the 2 and the 3, they are relatively prime. Now, this is another example. Here, if you look at that one, is 36, so 12 to the power 3. And then there you have 9 to the power 4, it's also 36, they balance out. And again, uh, the 3 and the 4, they also relatively prime. Similarly with that last one. So these are all examples of um, type 1 curves. I'm sure probably you'll be wondering how important are they? Why specifically type 1 curves? Are they important? Why are you interested in it? Okay. Well, one of the reasons um, we are interested in this is that um, usually you can use type 1 curves to um, construct type 1 uh, extensions. So if, I, if, I, if you consider, say, that the curve you have there is type 1, and of course we can use it to construct the extension which we have now. Again, probably you wonder, okay, now the integral extension, how you square it? Uh, it's important. <laughs> you know, people use those integral extensions for different computations. But just being able to give somebody the integral extension at 10 years, uh, it's of use to that person. At least you've done that person a 